What's up, guys? It's David Warren. We're going to talk today about how to present a patient to another healthcare provider. When would you do this? So you would do this if you're a nurse practitioner and maybe you're talking to your attending physician and you have a question about the patient. So you're talking to the physician about the patient. Maybe you are working in a area where you're going to be admitting a patient to the hospital, like the emergency department. So you're talking to the hospitalist. And so you're going to talk to the hospitalist about this patient. I actually just got off of a very long shift in the ER. I admitted like eight patients tonight and several of my colleagues were admitting patients as well. And as they were talking about the patients, it's interesting to hear how different providers talk to other healthcare providers about a patient or how they present a patient, meaning they are telling the patient's story to another healthcare provider to seek input. And here's my method of doing that. And it's called HEAD. H-E-A-D. Very simple mnemonic. It's the way that, uh, that I use. It keeps me very succinct and it keeps me in line. I do it the same way every time when I'm talking to another provider, so I really don't miss anything. So when you're talking to another healthcare provider uh, about a patient, you're seeking input, you really want to cover all your bases and you want to be thorough and consistent and not leave out anything that might be of importance. So let's jump right into it. H-E-A-D. The first is H, which stands for history. So I, as you all know by now, I work in the ER. So the examples I give you are going to be from life experiences, things that I've done in the ER. And uh, so that's how I'll go about doing this. So history, this is where you want to talk about the patient's history. What brought them in to the emergency department today? If you are calling a consultant, why are you calling that person? What history would lead you to call that consultant? Or what history would lead you to admit that patient? What did they come into the ER for today? You really don't want to talk about their whole medical history, like 30 years back, back when they had chicken pox as a child. You don't want to really cover that unless it's pertinent. You really want to cover only the history that's pertinent to why they're coming in today. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we have a 63-year-old who's going to be admitted to the hospital for heart failure, and I'm talking to the hospitalist. So I'll call up the hospitalist and say, hi, it's David Warren, I'm the NP in the ER, I have a patient to admit to you. Uh, this is Mr. James Jackson, he's a 63-year-old male, and here I would go into pertinent past medical history. So having chicken pox as a six-year-old is not pertinent to his heart failure, so I'd probably leave that out. However, Having hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol are all very pertinent to having heart failure. So I might say, hi, uh, I'm David Warren. I'm the NP in the ER. I have Mr. James Jackson here. He is a 63-year-old male. He has a past medical history of hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol. He's medicated for all of that, and he's coming into the ER today. And this is where I would go into why the patient's here today. So what brought them in today? So this is Mr. James Jackson. He has hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol. He's coming into the emergency department today for increasing shortness of breath, increasing lower extremity edema over the past four to five days. He said he's really felt fatigue for the past week or so, but over the past four or five days, he's really noticed an increased shortness of breath and this lower extremity edema. It's worsened when he walks. It's worsened with any kind of exertion. It's better when he's sitting still or when he's sitting down and he props his feet up. However, he's also had this intermittent chest pain as well, and that just started today. And the chest pain is like an aching sensation or it's pressure. It comes and goes. It's exertional. And again, this is where you would really just tell the story of the patient. I kind of made that up off the fly. But you would really tell the story of the patient. What actually brought them into the emergency department today? Why are you calling the consultant? So really, you want to cover the history, cover the pertinence, don't leave anything out, but you want to be succinct. You don't want to keep the consultant on the line for 10 minutes talking about the patient's history. You really want to cut to the chase. So include pertinent medical history and then include why they came to the emergency department today. So that's H, history. Number two, out of head, history exam. This is where you're going to talk about your exam. So whenever you go examine the patient, obviously you're gonna chart those findings. And whenever you're speaking to the consultant or to the admitting hospitalist, you're gonna talk about your exam. So here's how that might go. I might say, going back to Mr. James Jackson, uh, Mr. Jackson is sitting up in bed. He's in moderate distress. He's tripoding. 
Uh, his cardiac exam shows sinus tachycardia. His lung exam shows rails in the bottom third of his lungs bilaterally. And his oxygen saturation is 90% on room air. He has three plus pitting edema to bilateral lower extremities. There are no open wounds or open sores on his extremities, and there are no signs of infection that I can see on his exam. And that might be how you talk about your exam. Uh, if it's abdominal pain, obviously you're going to be focused on the abdomen. If it is a neuro complaint, maybe they're having a CVA, you're really going to focus on their neuro exam. So whatever the patient is coming in for, that's the exam you really want to focus on. So again, if they're coming in for cardiac complaint or respiratory complaint, really hone in on that exam. Give the pertinence that you find in your exam. So if they have a murmur, then you want to describe that murmur. If their lung sounds or abnormal, they have wheezes, they have rails, they have ronchi, whatever they have, whatever the abnormality is, you really want to be specific in talking about that abnormality. And this is, again, the exam portion that you perform. When you're talking to the consultant, you're going to explain that. Explain the pertinent positives, the pertinent negatives, and basically what you find on your exam and how that ties into what the patient's here for. So again, it needs to be focused. So that's exam. Number three, history, exam, assessment is number three, assessment. And this is kind of what you've done in the ER up until this point. So whenever you're calling the consultant, let them know what's taken place. So for instance, Mr. James Jackson, we can say he is in room three. He, so far, he's had an EKG that showed some nonspecific ST T wave changes. There's no STEMI. Uh, and there's really no significant abnormalities. He's in sinus tachycardia at a rate of 112. His vital signs are stable apart from his uh, sinus tachycardia. He's a febrile. His blood work, uh, his CBC is grossly normal. His uh, chemistry shows a sodium of 142 and it shows a potassium of 2.3. His urinalysis is normal. His chest x-ray shows a uh, bilateral lower lobe pneumonia. And so far, I have started some Zosin for suspected healthcare acquired pneumonia. Uh, and, and again, this is where you would kind of spill out what you've done in the emergency department so far. And again, I'm just kind of making this up off the fly. So it's really going to depend on your patient. So whenever you're talking to the consultant, let them know what you've done and why you've done what you've done. So you've gotten the EKG because he's short of breath, because he's having chest pain. Um, you could also say, obviously, on a uh, shortness of breath and a chest pain guy, you're going to say his troponin was negative or positive, whatever it was. Uh, his BNP is 1,600. His baseline BNP is around 900. Uh, so he could be in failure. So this is where you really want to lay out what exactly you've done for the patient. Do it in a very succinct way as you're flipping through the chart, as you're talking to the, uh, to the attending or to your consultant. Tell them what you've done. Uh, maybe, and again, sometimes we order tests that may not be necessary. Maybe he was complaining of sore throat or something or fever, and we also did a flu swab on him. Um, depending on the patient, maybe it's not pertinent. Uh, maybe it's not pertinent that you mention that. I, I'm trying to think of a test that might not be pertinent to this. The flu test might be pertinent if he's febrile and he's having shortness of breath and he's got congestive heart failure. So it wasn't a great example, but you get the point. Only include the pertinent test, and you probably wouldn't be ordering it if it wasn't pertinent anyway. Uh, however, include the pertinent test. Uh, include the pertinent diagnostic studies. Whatever you've done, let the consultant know this is what I've done, this is what I've found so far, this is my assessment. And at the uh, end of the assessment, kind of summarize everything together uh, and, and let the consultant know why you've ordered these tests and what the results show. So that is assessment. Okay, so final one, head, H-E-A-D, history, exam, assessment, and diagnosis. Diagnosis is the final one. It also kind of coincides with disposition. So we'll say disposition and diagnosis. And this is the part where you would say um, what you are listing on your differentials, what your final diagnosis is, or whatever your diagnoses are, if there are multiple, and what your disposition is for that patient. So it might be something like this. So Mr. Jackson is coming in. Uh, we've already went through his history. We went through his exam, his assessment. 
So you might say, on my differential would be uh, an acute exacerbation of his chronic heart failure, a COPD exacerbation, uh, he might have pneumonia, he might have sepsis, he might have a pulmonary embolus. So you want to list out what your differentials are, and then you could go to your diagnosis and say, uh, based on what I've seen, uh, it, it seems to be a very clear-cut case of uh, an acute exacerbation of his chronic heart failure. I don't see any evidence of, and then list your other differentials of what, whatever you've ruled out. And then you might say, and um, you know, Mr. Jackson needs to be admitted to the telemetry floor for um, IV diuresis, uh, potassium replacement, and serocardiac exams, and e serocardiac uh, EKGs and troponins. So it might look something like that. Uh, and again, it's gonna depend on your patient, whatever your patient's there for. You're again gonna lay out uh, what your differentials are, why you want to admit the patient to the hospital and where you think they should go. So is this a medical patient? Do they need to be on just the floor? Do they need to be on telemetry? Or is it an ICU level care? Maybe the patient's intubated and you really want to, uh, you think the patient needs to be in the ICU for whatever reason. Um, just lay that out. Let the consulting physician know why you are, um, why you want to admit the patient. And again, I'm using uh, the hospitalist as as an example here, because we admit a ton of patients in the emergency department. However, sometimes you might not be admitting the patient. Maybe you're just calling cardiology to consult on the patient to find out, does this patient actually need to be admitted? In which case, your D might change. So instead of disposition to diagnosis, you might say, these are my differentials. This is what I think. What's your opinion on the patient based on what you've heard? Do you think this patient needs to stay in the hospital or can he follow up outpatient? And so, again, you're not always using this to admit patients, but maybe you're just calling to get input on the patient, or you're calling the patient's cardiologist because that's the, um, that's the patient's physician who takes care of them for their cardiac issues, and you are just looping them in on the care of the patient. Maybe they don't need to be admitted. Uh, but again, your D would be your differentials, your disposition, and your diagnosis. And all of that succinctly put together will uh, give all of the pertinence, all of the things that you've done, and if you use it in a very uh, thorough manner, meaning you follow, the same, you follow the same routine each time, you're not gonna miss anything. Whenever I first started as a nurse practitioner, this was challenging because you talk to physicians or you talk to other advanced practice providers, and you're kind of just all over the place. You're talking about this, and you jump to this, and you go back to this, and you go to there, and there's just no way to follow it. Whenever you have a set routine like head, so history, exam, assessment, and diagnosis, you have a very uh, thorough way to follow through and to stay the same each time, so you're not missing anything. Maybe you're not using this and you called to admit a patient and you forgot on a chest pain patient to tell them about their EKG changes, and you went through everything else, but you didn't use a, a succinct method and you missed something. And that could harm the patient, so you really want to use a method that keeps you doing the same thing every time. Consistency is key. Uh, using the same method uh, each time so you're not missing anything. You're going through the history, you're going through the exam, you're going through your assessment and what you've done, and you're going through your differentials and your diagnosis and why the patient needs to stay in the hospital. So that's my tip for you today, HEAD, H-E-A-D. It's very simple. Write it down and use it. And comment below. Let me know what your method is whenever you're talking to consultants or whenever you're talking to an admitting physician. How do you present a patient? For you students out there, comment below. Let me know how you present a patient to your preceptor and what you think is important. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.